Hello and welcome to my YouTube live show. God bless you. Nice to have you on board. God bless you and your families. Please let me know if you can hear me. Is my sound loud and clear? Give me one in the chat if you can hear me. Thank you for the confirmation, guys. Hello, Christopher Christian, Abdel Haliga, welcome. Frau Kolarik, sorry for uh, butchering your name, my friend Pete. James Crosspuls, Maya Maria, Red Rose, we are blessed. Hayden, my friend from Paul Talk, Nicole J, Dan, all of you. Hopefully, uh, if I forgot anyone, guys, bear with me. I love you all. Thank you for your support. God bless you and your families. Like I said, today's live show is going to be part two of exposing these liars, these Muslim heroes, these so-called Muslim debaters, right? Who go on speaker's corner uh, or try to refute uh, us or try they are trying but they are failing miserably as you know so before we start part two guys before we start part two of yesterday's live show so this is a continuation in the form of part two let us pray in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ pray with me dear lord please give me the courage and wisdom today to overcome lies and deceptions including taqiyya. Help me not to lean on my own understanding, but in everything acknowledge you, Lord, so that you can direct my words, thoughts, and actions. Give us a measure of your strength, so that we might not give in to discouragement, deception, and doubt. Please, Lord, help us honor you in all our ways. Lord, thank you that when I'm weak, you are strong. The devil is scheming, Lord, and I know he desires to keep us from spending time with you. Thank you for your grace, and because of the ultimate sacrifice of your beloved Son, we are saved. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Please loosen my tongue today, so I can speak without any error, but with wisdom and courage to do whatever needs to be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Like I said, thank you for joining in. Thank you for your support. God bless you. God bless your families. Guys, don't forget also, and someone in the text mentioned it. I think it was Abdel Haliga. There is a small Christian town in Syria that is under heavy jihadi attack, right? By the Muhammad and Abdulism who are suffering from Abdulism. Please pray for those Christian Assyrians who are living in that village in Syria called Tel Temer. Keep them in your praises, please. We know how powerful prayers can be, right guys? So please keep them in their prayers. Keep us in your prayers. Keep our admins in your prayers. Thank you. God bless you. So on this live broadcast, guys, we will have the opportunity again to expose the lies of these so-called Muslim heroes, these Muslim Muhammadan debaters, the so-called Muslim apologists. Yet again, we are going to spank them for you. And we are going to show you proof on the screen that they are nothing but liars and deceivers using taqiyya for their own personal agenda. To fill their pockets with money to deceive those victims who they call their fans and their Muslim crowd who have no clue what actual Islam means right last but not least guys when I finish my teaching today we'll have a nice Q&A session with our guests in the live chat so if you have any questions please note them down write them down and keep them so we will then answer your questions in the Q&A session when the teaching is over. So if you have any questions, keep them for you right now, but ask me later when I'm done teaching, right? So you can ask me questions, in other words, about today's teaching or any topic that you have difficulties with, and I will try to answer as far as I can. And if there are any Muslims who has the courage and the knowledge 
who can think they can refute me or take me down, my life, sorry, my Skype will be open and you can call me live to refute me. Maybe you can refute me and I finally can shut down my YouTube channel. I promise you, if you can refute me, I will close my YouTube channel. Right? So hopefully there will be in the stars for a nice and respectful discussion. Right? My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. The Rob Christian without any separation. Let us start, guys. Let us start. So as you see, yesterday we refuted, spanked and served Mr. Shamsi, the guy that you see here, and his one of his boyfriends, Mimi Hijab. That Mimi Hijab, right? That same Mimi Hijab. So today we are going to continue this teaching in part two, right? Because we are not done yet, people. <laughs> we are not done yet, right? Here we go. Yes, here we go, guys. As we mentioned yesterday, guys, <clears throat> Mr. Mimi Hijab or Muhammad Hijab, whatever his name is, he said, Elijah means God is with us. And we showed you that's not true. That's a false claim. He lied during that debate with David Wood. And he really got spanked afterwards badly, right? He loved the picture, right? I, I don't know who made that picture, but the guy who made that picture is brilliant. Actually, it's, it, re it, it really looks like he's wearing the Hebrew uh, style, right? You know, you see with the nice Hebrew hair, with the Jewish hair, right? He really like, looks like a little nice Jewish boy, right? This is really brilliant. You, know, you, have, you have really amazing Christian uh, Photoshop uh, professionals around, man. I have to give you that. <laughs> this is really, really amazing. <laughs> CP made it? <laughs> those curls. You see those, those curls? Man! <laughs> man, oh man. So guys, let us show you how these liars have no shame, they have no dignity when they speak in public. Let us start. What did I say? The Quran claims. Surely Allah and his angels pray for the Prophet. Mr. Hijab was ready for this, so he proceeded to smash my mistranslation. He says, Allah says, uh, that Allah yusalli ala nabi and he's here saying that he prays to the Prophet. There's a difference between yusalli lahu and yusalli ala in the Arabic language. I knew this was going to happen. I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> I knew I was going to have to give you a free Arabic lesson here today. Free Arabic lessons, it. guys. <laughs> and that's why the translators put for, not to the Prophet. You don't know what the, the words in Arabic mean. Don't hit, speak salah. This, come on, please, don't embarrass yourself. According to Mr. Hijab, what did I say? And he's here saying that he prays to the Prophet. What did I actually say multiple times? Surely Allah and his angels pray for the Prophet. Allah and his angels pray for the Prophet. What's the correct translation? And that's why the translators put for not to the Prophet. Muhammad Hijab, what an embarrassing career ending statement. Mr. Muhammad Hijab, I advise you to never ever again debate in your life. Your career has ended, my friend. Don't debate with people like David Wood. Don't ever debate on Speaker's Corner in London because your career is over. To make it even more worse, guys, this guy even lied about the Arabic because it does not say for according to the Arabic because the Quran says the following Inna Allah wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala an-nabi 
again ala al nabi that means on the prophet not for and not to if muhammad hijab claims to be an expert as an arab speaker he clearly embarrassed himself more than that it's not for it's not to it's on the prophet i don't uh, blame david wood for not knowing arabic but this mr hijab guy he's an egyptian he should not have used taqiyya and a, basically he's agreeing with david wood on the for the prophet part it's not to it's not for it's on the prophet so not did he bust himself and his fake prophet he busted himself on in the english and he busted himself on the arabic so let us go to the quran to prove to you that four and two are both wrong so if we go to quran chapter 33 ayah 56 we can read the following inna allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala an nabi yusalluna pray on the prophet it does not mean to ala means on the prophet it does not mean for the prophet it means on the prophet on the prophet so we know that muhammad hijab he lied about the english and he also lied about the arabic it does not mean for it means on the prophet so muhammad hijab never ever again debate because your career in debating is over shame on you for lying about the quran of allah so after the debate between muhammad hijab and david wood this guy went to africa for some time he went to ghana if i'm not mistaken then he came back to london again and on speaker's corner muhammad hijab said no i meant praising not praying allah praises muhammad so let us see how muhammad hijab again is lying about his own false god the moon god muhammad his god allah let us go and show you that muhammad hijab has no clue about islam he is a hypocrite lying deceiving muslim so if we go to chapter 1 al fatiha ayah 2 it says alhamdulillah rabbil alameen all the praises and thanks be to allah to who are the praises to allah not to muhammad so Mr. Muhammad Hijab, again, for the second time you have lied, it does not mean praising or praises. Because only Allah is worthy in Islam to be praised. Are you telling us that Muhammad at the same time is Allah and equal to Allah? So guys, we can conclude Muhammad Hijab, he lied about the word praying and he also lied about the word praising Muhammad Hijab you have been busted twice guys thank you for watching so as you heard guys so as you heard <laughs> Muhammad Hijab he truly has no shame he has no honor and he has no dignity right and we showed you immediately after the debate guys he went to Ghana or Ghana right right because it was actually a very devastating and embarrassing debate for this Mimi Hijab right he got busted by David Wood and he got busted by all the Arabic speakers including Christian Prince including me right we immediately started to make videos right to refute him even more I mean David Wood did an amazing job but like I said in the in the video that you just were listening to I don't blame um, David Wood for saying Allah is praying for the Prophet right David Wood does not know Arabic it's actually Allah is praying on but we are still asking when Allah is praying on Muhammad to who is Allah praying 
after 1400 years, we still don't get any answer. Why is that? So when he came back, this Abdul, when he came back from Ghana, he said, no, no, I meant to say, you know, I made a mistake. I mean, everyone can make mistakes, right, guys? I mean, we are all sinners. We all make mistakes. So he said, I made a mistake. I meant to say Allah praises. Allah praises Muhammad. But wait a second, Abdul. You said Allah praises the Prophet. So after the hot debate with David Wood, Muhammad Hijab said, Allah praises the Prophet. You liar, you scumbag, you have no shame, you have no dignity. So he tried to fix the problem, right? He tried to fix the problem. He tried the, to fix the damaging situation that he was in, the damaging state that he was in, right? He said, no, no, Allah praises the Prophet, but you have... You, Abdul, have no shame. You have no dignity. Because according to chapter 1, the first chapter, man. This is the first chapter. Chapter Al-Fatiha. In Ayah 2, it says, All praise. Not two, not three. But all praises are for Allah. Right? So, when did it happen that Allah is praising Muhammad, you filthy liar? All praises is only recommended for Allah only, not for Muhammad. Because now you're just saying that you're nothing but a nice little mushrik boy. You're a pagan. You are comparing Muhammad with Allah when you're saying that Allah is praising Muhammad. And on top of that, you are basically calling Muhammad the God of Allah. So here, Muhammad is even higher than Allah himself when you are saying that Allah is praising Muhammad. Because praising in religion is an act of worship. So Allah is worshipping Muhammad? So Mr. Mimi Hijab, let me clap for you like your Muslim crowd for doing an amazing job. Instead of fixing it, you even made it more worse for yourself, proving that Muhammad is actually the God of Allah. Clap, 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 Muslim audience. Where are the Muslim audience? I'm not hearing the clapping. You know, so this is clear proof. When Muslims, when they are listening to a debate, they are clapping without any shame, without any knowledge. They are only clapping because this guy was only mocking David Wood. Right? What a shame. What a bust. So this guy, again, you have been served. You have been spanked again, Mr. Muhammad Hijab. Shame on you for lying. Shame on you for using taqiyah. And shame on you for putting Muhammad, your fake prophet, in a really damaging spot. Claiming that Allah is worshipping basically Muhammad. Because praising in religion means an act of worship. Clap, 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 Muslims. Yeah. So, let it go, guys. Let us continue. Let us continue. Today, guys, we're going to put these two on the test. We are going to put Ali Dawa on the test. This Muslim hero, he's another minion. He's another boyfriend of Mimi Hijab. And this other minion of, of Muhammad Hijab, Mr. Farid. I mean, look at this beard, man. Look at, look at his clothes, man. A true Arab. He wants to show you that he's a true Arab. Right? So, this guy made a six hour long video about the apostate prophet we talked about it last time right guys so this one this one was the guy who was speaking who was trying to refute apostate prophet right and we spanked him and today we're going to continue showing you that this guy is a liar like the boyfriend of Mimi Hijab the minion of Mimi Hijab you know some people here love to call him uh, the nurse the nurse right of Mimi Hijab, Ali Dawa the nurse, right? So let us continue, guys, this horrible and devastating spanking of these Muslim heroes. Their heroes, we are going to put them on the test again to show you that they are nothing liars and deceivers, right? But what else is new? Let us play the video again. A simple question. This is a simple question. This is this is the crux of the matter, yeah? Jesus said, and he shall glorify me. I dare you, I challenge you to bring me a single religion. 
put Islam to a side that glorifies Jesus like we do. Oh. <laughs> did you hear what he said? Guys, did you hear what he said? Did you hear it? He says, there is no one like the Muslims who is glorifying Jesus. You filthy liar, you filthy deceiver. Don't you Muslims say that Jesus is not the son of God? Now you are glorifying Jesus. So guys, he's saying that he's doing tasbih to Jesus. Did you catch it? Tasbih, another act of worship, glorification of Jesus. This guy made a huge claim and he's speaking for all the Muslims. Let me go back again. Listen guys. I dare you, I challenge you to bring me a single religion. Put Islam to a side that glorifies Jesus like we do. Okay. Glorify Jesus like we do. <laughs> What an amazing donkey. You are, you Ali Dawa, you are a certified donkey. And he's speaking for all the Muslims. He said we, right? This is a nice bid'ah. This is a nice innovation. But last time I checked, innovation, aka bid'ah, is haram. It's a major sin. This guy is adding to Islam. He said, he just said, and everyone was listening. Everyone was listening. He said, no one glorifies Jesus as we do. Who? The Muslims. And he's speaking for all the Muslims. Why are these Abduls here that are standing, not giving him a slap on his back, backside here, on his head? If, if I was here standing like this Abdul or this Abdul, I would have slapped the guy on his neck. Potato. Yeah, he's a potato. He just called everyone here a worshiper of Jesus, glorifying Jesus. Why are you not slapping him on the back side of his head, man? Give him a nice slap, man. Yeah, batata tipi bear, exactly. Guys, don't forget to keep our amazing admins also in your prayers together with me. We need your prayers, guys, to expose these liars, these filthy deceivers. You see how they are adding to Islam, right? They are adding to Islam, right? They truly have no shame. They truly have no dignity, right? What a shame. What a shame, Mr. Ali Dawa. You truly have no dignity. You have no honor. You have no shame to use such lies. You think no one is noticing it? <laughs> you think we are stupid here? We don't see or watch these videos, those debates. You see, guys. They are always proud. Rob Christian, Christian Prince. Why are you not showing your face? Why are you not coming to speaker's corner? Well, my friend, why? Here is why. Because here from behind the screen, we can actually play your videos, your embarrassing videos, why, where we can show you and show the Muslim audience and our Christian brothers and sisters in Christ that you are nothing but a nice little mushrik boyfriend or maybe hijab. You just said in front of everybody, and it's recorded, that you are glorifying Jesus, you Muslim. And you are speaking for all the Abduls here around you. For everyone. What a shame. What a bust. Mr. Ali Dawa, you just got, you just got spanked and served for everybody to see. Right? Actually, guys, I'm, I'm going to make it even more worse. So he, you heard him. He said, no one glorifies Jesus as we do, as the Muslims do, right? And he's speaking for all the Muslims. Let me go to the Quran. This is chapter 48, guys. Read with me. This is chapter 48, Al-Fatih, chapter Al-Fatih, Ayah 9. Let me show you that not only according to him, he's glorifying Jesus, all the Muslims, you heard him, right? This Ali Dawa, Abdul, who is suffering from Abdulism. You also must glorify Muhammad every morning and evening, according to the Quran. لِتُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَتُعَزِّرُوهُ وَتُوَقِّرُوهُ وَتُسَبِّحُوهُ بُكْرَةً وَأَصِيلًا So you have to glorify Muhammad. Every morning and evening. Why? Because according to grammar rules, guys, the last person who is in this case Muhammad, the Rasul, 
every word that comes after the Rasul, you see all these words here, from here all the way to there, they are addressed and pointed out for the Rasul. That's according to the Arabic grammar rules, not my rules. When we go to school, we learn these things. These are basic things. So according to this ayah, you have to glorify, do tasbih, glorify to Muhammad every morning and evening. A nice glorification of Muhammad. So Mr. Mimi, uh, sorry, Mr. Ali Dawa, the nurse, he said, we, no one is glorifying Jesus like we do. And he's speaking for all the Muslims. Not only that, you also must glorify Muhammad. So how many gods do you have in Islam? You have Allah, you have Muhammad, and you have Jesus now? Yeah, we know, we know. Jesus is the eternal word of Allah. He is Ruh Allah. He is the spirit of Allah. Right? So we know that Jesus actually is God together with Muhammad, together with Allah. So you have a three... At least, at least three gods. Hence, Tawheed, which means unification. Allahu Ahad. Allah is one of, one God. Two gods. And Jesus, as you said, you glorify Jesus. So you have three gods in Islam, at least. Thank you for addressing Tawheed for us. You are making my job very easy. Mr. Ali Dawa. Lord have mercy. And you dare to attack our Trinitarian God? You see, Muslims, when they speak, guys, when they love to talk about the Trinity, show them that they are nothing but pagans themselves. They love to call us pagans and mushrikeen, but they are actually the ones who are doing shirk, right? For the people who just joined in, let me play that video again, because I think that's a really amazing and damaging part what he said. Let me uh, go back. This is a simple question that I want to ask. Answer, okay. Man, be quiet, let me speak. Okay, I've got many, many things to say unto you, for you cannot bear the... Oh, okay, that's not... The you would want to change your... Queens. Don't change the okay, topic. okay. <laughs> this is a simple question that I want to ask. Answer, okay. Man, be quiet. Let me speak. Where is, okay. Where was okay. it? Many, many I think he. I'm answering this because usually. Oh, I lost it, man. Where, where did he okay, say that? The, they won't let me speak. Yeah? Yeah. I'm gonna accept it. He showed. Um, as he speaks, anyway, he anyway, you heard it, right? It's recorded. So let me continue to another video, guys. Look what he's saying here. Very simple, yeah? I said to you that Jesus said, I have many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. For he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He will not speak of himself. As he hears, he shall speak and he shall glorify you. One second. Where, what did you quote? John I spoke about 15. the spirit of truth. One second. Did I quote John 15 to you? You didn't give me, you didn't give me any quotation. There you go. So what? You spoke so about the spirit you, of truth. Okay. So Just do you, do make you, your point. Okay. No, no, no. So do you agree that you went to another passage of the Bible and read it? He's doing a jig at the okay, moment. Okay. Can you read your, your, your... Why are you talking? You're a cameraman. You should read record. Your You're a cameraman. Record. Do you see our brother talking? He's recording. I'm asking you something. I'm asking something. You work on your hand skills. Yeah? Okay. Read your reference, brother. Stop stalling. Did you see this guy is mocking you. I want to know that.
Oh, my sound is gone. Sorry, guys. Sorry. So, guys, again, sorry for that. Sorry for that. <clears throat> my voice uh, was gone. I don't know why. Anyway, so he was basically trying to say that Jesus is talking about another prophet who will come after him. Right? Okay. So, sound is good now. Okay. So, he was trying to force Muhammad. He was trying to force Muhammad inside John 16. Right? Yesterday we showed you the ayah that is saying to the Muslims, you have to go to the Torah and you have to go to the gospel. So actually here Ali Dawah is doing a much better job, right? Than the, these two. These two were talking about Isaiah 42 last time, right? We spanked them both on Isaiah 42. Right? So Ali Dawa, Ali Dawa is doing a better job actually, listening at least to his Quran, to chapter 7, ayah 157, where it says that you have to go to the Injil and the Torah to find the name of Muhammad. Right? And he's trying to force Muhammad in chapter 16 of John, John 16, right? But why are you not reading from the beginning? Right? Let me read it, guys. Let me start actually here in verse 4. But these things, here Jesus speaking, but this thing I have told you, have I told you, that when the time shall come, you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. But now I go my way to him that sent me, who? The Father. Now question, Mr. Ali Dawa, Do you believe that Allah is... The father of Jesus? No. So why do you want to have a cake and eat it too, Mr. Ali Dawa? You have truly no shame. You have no dignity. So here you already failed, right? To him, the father. So Jesus is saying, I'm going back to the father. And none of you ask at me whether guess though. But because I've said these things unto you. So this part is quoting, right? This is the part. From he know on, he is quoting this. But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. So he's speaking to the disciples, right, Jesus? Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Question, you know, Rob Christian, you know, guys, when I was born, I used to give my mother a big headache. Why? Because I used to ask many questions, right? So another question, Mr. Ali Dawa. Another question. Are you telling me Jesus will send Muhammad? So again, clearly your fake prophet, according to you, not my words, you said it. According to you, Muhammad is the messenger of Jesus. If according to you, the comforter is Muhammad. Boom, on your forehead. So here, you are again confirming to us that Jesus is the Lord of Muhammad. Thank you, Ali Dawa. Where are the Muslim audience? Why are they not clapping? Clap, clap, clap. Right? So when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So basically here, Ali Dawa is trying to force Muhammad here. Right? Of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go my to my father. Again, Jesus is saying, I will go to my father. Ali Dawa, do you believe? Do you believe that Jesus is the son of the father of heaven? No. So why do you want to have a cake and eat it too, Mr. Ali Dawa? Huh? Mr. Ali Dawa, you hypocrite, you munafiq. You truly have no shame. Look at this face, man. Look at this face. Look at this, these eyes. Isn't he beautiful? Do you believe that Jesus has a father in heaven? Huh? Do you believe that Jesus is the Lord of Muhammad? As mentioned in John 16? Huh? I will send him unto you. So when you are going to say and claim that the, our Holy Spirit, which is part of the Godhead, right? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, who is the Comforter. If you're going to say that that's Muhammad, then you have to also accept that Jesus is the one who is sending the Holy Spirit. 
sending in this case Muhammad. <laughs> so thank you for showing us that you are another mushrik, like, and you claimed and everybody was listening, it's on tape, it's recorded. You said, no, all the Muslims, you are speaking for all the Muslims. And I quote, you said, and I quote, no one glorifies Jesus as we do, end quote. So thank you for proving again for the second time to us that Jesus is the Lord of Muhammad, that Jesus is actually being worshipped by the Muslims. Now we understand, guys, from the explanation of this Abdul here, now we understand why Jesus is Kalimat Allah, the eternal word of Allah, and Ruh Allah, the spirit of Allah. Now we understand why. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ali Dawa. Right? Not only that, right? Not only that, if we go to John 14, John 14, Again, Jesus is talking in verse 2 about his father. Mr. Ali Dawa, does Jesus have a father in heaven? Eh? Do you want to have a cake and eat it too again? Why are you not reading it from the same John? I mean, it's the sa still the same Gospel of John. Believes do not, here Jesus again is speaking, believes do not that I am in the father and the father is in me. Huh? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelt in me. Do you agree with this, Mr. Ali Dawa? He doubt the works. Believe me that I'm in the Father. Do you believe this again, Mr. Ali Dawa? And the Father in me, or else believe in me for the very works sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believed on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do. But because I go unto my Father, again, Jesus is saying he will go to the Father. And whosoever you shall ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Wow. Again, Jesus claiming deity. Thank you, Ali Dawa. Thank you for proving to us that Jesus is God. If you shall ask my thing, anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, so Jesus is saying he will pray and ask the Father and he shall give you another comforter, right? That he may abide with you forever. Now is Muhammad with the Muslims forever? Even the spirit of truth, the next verse, whom the world cannot receive. So are you telling me that the Muslims did not receive Muhammad? Because it sees him not. We did see Muhammad, the Muslims saw Muhammad, right? The companions saw Muhammad. It's the same comforter, right? Jesus is talking about the comforter. Neither know him, but you know him, for he dwelled with you and shall be in you. Ew! Muslims, are Muhammad in you? Are Muhammad in you? So if you Muslims, Mr. Ali Dawa, Mr. Ali Dawa, if you claim that the comforter is Jesus, then you have to accept that Muhammad is inside you, Abdul. Deal with it, swallow it, accept it. Ew, ew, ew. Muhammad is inside the Muslims, guys. Right? And the proof is in front of you. You have to deal with it, Muslims. When you are going to quote Bible verses, you will get spanked left and right, right? You see how damaging it is when you have to call as a liar and deceiver like this Ali Dawa, you have to call Muhammad the comforter because you are going to say that Muhammad is inside the Muslims. But we know the comforter is nobody else than the Holy Spirit that lives inside the Christians and our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, right? So guys, let it go. Let us continue and play another video for you. And this is the uh, Farid guy, right? That Farid. This is the Abdul who is going to speak right now, right? Let me spank this guy once more. Let's see what uh, Ridvan has for us today. 
In Islam, these weird creatures called jinns exist, and the majority of Muslims believe in their existence. Even though Islam claims to be fulfilling Christianity and Judaism, two religions that never had such stories of some uh, weird beings that live in a parallel world like humans and uh, also go to heaven and hell. Yes, according to Islam, jinns are born, they live, and they die. They walk among us in a parallel world, they have uh, games and beliefs and lives and everything, and when they die, they are judged in front of Allah. The biggest question in this matter is, if jinns are real and exist in Islam, if they are so important that they even exist Guys, please pay humans, attention. and that the Almighty God speaks to them as well, then why were they never mentioned by Christians and Jews? Why were they not mentioned by the prophets? Why do jinns not have any role in the Bible? Some Muslim scholars notice that gap, then they take uh, some biblical references to demons and imply that, uh, that jinns were also mentioned in the Bible. If you read the Bible impartially or from a Christian or Jewish point of view, there is just no such thing in the Bible. Well, I guess the only way to find out if Radvan is correct is by actually going through the Bible. Hmm. Let's see here. Look how he's going to lie, guys. Okay, so it looks like, um, yeah, these demons slash spirits will be judged. It also looks like they will cause seizures, cripple people, give people great strength, deceive, perform signs or miracles, possess man, possess animals, cause blindness and muteness, and were worshipped. Sounds like jinns to me. You truly have no shame, you have no dignity, Mr. Farid. You are nothing but a liar and a deceiver, right? You are a liar and a deceiver. You heard him, right, guys? He said that the jinns are basically demons, and he was quoting Bible verses, right? You filthy liar, you filthy deceiver. Let me show you that this guy is nothing but a liar and he's nothing but a deceiver, like his fake prophet. So, what he just said, guys, what he just said, and you heard him, he said that the jinns are demons of the Bible, right? Right? He claimed that the jinns of Islam are the same creatures as the demons, the fallen angels of Christianity and the Holy Bible. Now if we go to Matthew 25, let me spank this Abdul left and right. If we go to Matthew 25 verse 41 from the King James Version, then shall he also unto them on the left hand depart from me, you curse into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. You see, you see, the, it's talking about the devil and his angels. Now, if we study the Bible carefully and we study Christianity and Judaism carefully, we know that the devil was actually an angel, right? He was an angel and he became a fallen angel. He became a demon. So demons are follow, falling, fallen angels, fallen angels who went against God, like Satan. So Satan is actually an angel in Christianity. But a jinn in Islam is not an angel. It's a different creature. Right? It's a different creature. And from another verse, from 2 Peter, 2 Peter 2, 4, also from the King James Version. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell. So here, God is talking here about the fallen angels who became demons. They sinned against God, right? And he cast them down to hellfire and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved under, unto judgment, right? So there's nothing called jinn in Christianity, you filthy liar, you filthy deceiver, Mr. Ferret. And guys, this, is, this was the guy who made a six hour video about the apostate prophet. And Mimi Hijab uploaded that video that I was just playing for you. So you see how they are lying and deceiving? 
And if we go to a third verse, Revelation 12, 9, 9 from the King James Version, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, so his name is the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. You see? So, there's nothing called jinn in, in Christianity. There's nothing called jinn in the Holy Bible, you filthy liar. And you dare to quote Bible verses to prove your point? You filthy liar, you have no shame, you have no dignity. Like your fake prophet. So you see how these people have to use lies. They, use, they have to use taqiyya for their own personal agenda. Right? Filthy liars, you filthy deceivers. And let me prove to you that the falling angels, the demons, are not jinns. And here is the proof. Right? So in Christianity, guys, pay attention. Demons are actually angels that went against God. We can ma make that conclusion, right? But in Islam, and I went to this Islam Q&A. Let me give you the link. Islam Q&A website. IslamQ&A.info. Official Islamic Salafi website. The same Salafi sect that Farid is following. He's a Salafi like the owner of this website, Sheikh Muhammad Saleh al Munajjid. So the Sheikh here is explaining, he is explaining what angels are. Now read with me. Angels, they are created from light. As Aisha, the baby bride that Muhammad split into two basically, may Allah be pleased with her, reported. The Messenger of Allah, Muhammad, said, now look what Muhammad is saying. Pay with me. Pay attention, guys. Are you with me? The angels are created from light, just as the jinn are created from smokeless fire. You see that? Do Christians believe in that? Does the Bible teach us this? No. You filthy liar. You filthy deceiver, Mr. Farid. You are nothing but a liar and deceiver like your boyfriend. Mimi Hijab, right? And the proof is in front of you. And if we go to the Quran, chapter 55, ayah 15, and he created the jinn from a smokeless flame of fire. So the jinn is not created from light. It's create the jinns are created, Satan is created from smokeless flame of fire. So different creatures than the angels, right? Because it says the angels are created from light. And the jinns are created the jinns are created from smokeless flame of fire. Different creatures. You filthy liar. You filthy deceiver. Lying about the Holy Bible. And AP, the apostate prophet, was right. Right? He, he was asking. He was asking the question. Why the Bible is not talking about jinns? And this guy was lying about the Bible, right? Lying from the back of his teeth, right? Quoting the Bible verses without any shame, without any dignity, adding, you Muslims have truly no shame, you have no dignity, right? Liars, liars, your pants got fire. Again, spanked and served for everyone to see. Lying about Islam. Lying about Christianity for their own personal agenda. Potatoes. Potato, potato, potato. I love that potato song. Right? Look how he's dressed. Look at this beard, man. Man. If you have any shame, Mr. Farid, after the spanking that I gave you, at least open up your cam, shave that beard of yours, because you are truly not worthy to call yourself a Muslim. Lying from the back of your teeth. Shave that beard, man. You are not worthy of this beard. You are not worthy of the beard that you are forced to have in Islam. You are not worthy of it. You are a liar and a deceiver. Like your fake prophet, right? 
If we go to Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 2926, 2926, let me give you the link, right? Because this guy yesterday, I was showing you that he said, you know, you can't compare Hitler with Muhammad. Well, Muhammad is much worse, worse than Hitler. Look what Muhammad is saying. Allah's messenger said, the hour will not be established until you fight with the Jews. It does, it's actually saying you have to kill the Jews and the stones behind which a Jew will be hiding will say, oh Muslim, there's a Jew behind me. So come kill him. So you have to kill all the Jews. So yes, again, we spent you yesterday, but I wanted to talk about it and mention it again. Mr. Farid, you said you cannot compare Muhammad with Hitler because, you know, Hitler was very bad person. But your prophet is much worse than Hitler because let's say Hitler murdered six million Jews. But your fake prophet is ordering you to kill all the Jews, else the judgment hour or the judgment day will not be established. So yeah, first you have to kill all the Jews, then the hour will be established. Nice genocide, the genocidal prophet. So Mr. Farid, shave that beard of yours because you're not, you are not worthy of Islam. You are not worthy to call yourself a Muslim. You are a nice munafiq. You are a nice hypocrite. Lying. Right? Lying from the back of your teeth. Like this Ali Dawa, the nurse of Muhammad Hijab. Right? Guys, how many Muslim heroes do we have to spank today? I think many, right guys? Let, let me make it even more worse. Let me even make it more worse. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters and dear friends. I hope you guys are doing well. Welcome to this video. We're going to get straight into it. We're not going to waste time, inshallah. Um, we are in Ghana, in Africa. We've come here. The right British man. Two weeks abroad, you can save the world, make a difference, all for $1,999. Flights and insurance not included. This just seems fundamentally wrong to me. This idea of profiteering from poverty. Shouldn't it be the volunteers get a good experience and the communities really benefit from it? But I don't see that in the way the industry is going today. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We're here in Northern Ghana. You see, about a hundred years ago, the British Empire came to this country with their missionaries. And they told the people, they told the people that Jesus should be believed in as God. I want to tell everyone today that that was the wrong thing for them to say. This is what you must know. That when the colonizer came over to the Golden Coast a hundred years ago, I heard on Thai show, Mo Hijab went to Ghana. He did go to Ghana. I saw the show, actually. Um, <laughs> he followed his channel. He's actually wearing, like, an all-African print top with, like, with an African print hat. And I'm like, bro. You're doing too much. You're in Ghana already. Okay, don't worry. You don't need to try and blend in because what you're doing is that you're going you're going too much you're doing too much too much yes they tried to take your minerals 
They try to take your gold. Abdul, 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 you truly have no shame, you have no dignity. Weren't the ones who started the slavery and conquering the African, basically Africa, weren't that the Muslims who started to immediately attack Egypt? The moment Muhammad died, guys, Abu Bakr and Omar, they started conquering the, the countries around them. They attacked the Roman Empire, they attacked Egypt, they attacked Syria, they attacked Iraq, they attacked all the countries and they forced everyone to convert to Islam by the sword, right? Right? And Khalid ibn Walid, Khalid ibn Walid, the murderer, the, cabal, the cannibalist, who used to cut people's heads off and eat them. Why are you not talking about that, Mr. Muhammad Hijab? Why are you not showing everybody that actually you Muslims started all this? You see, the early spread of Islam started in 632 to 75 AD, right? So basically you can see here how they conquered all these lands around them, right? So here is in 622 to 632, Muhammad expand basically to nowadays Saudi Arabia. But after the death of Muhammad, look how many countries they started to conquer by the sword, right? By the sword of Islam. They reached all the way to North Spain. Imagine if the Spaniards in the Spanish Inquisition, if they didn't drive them back, whole Europe would have been taken and Sharia law was implemented. Cutting hands and feet of people, forcing Islam on you, forcing the jizya, the mafia protection money on you. So you're the ones, as you see here, who started the slavery. You're the ones who started colonizing. You, Mr. Mimi Hijab, you have truly no shame. You have truly no dignity, right? You hypocrite munafiq. And Muslims invaded Africa and ran the slave trade from the 7th century or the 20th century, 14th for 40 years. And still till today, they are owning slaves in the Arab world. Slavery still exists in Islam. What about the Prophet of Islam? Right? If we go to Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih, Sahih, Sahih al-Bukhari, Volume 6, Book 60, Hadith 80. Here's the Arabic reference. Book 65, Hadith number 4557. Uh, sahih, Sahih, Sahih. Narrated Abu Huraira, the verse. You, true Muslims, are the best of peoples ever raised up for mankind, means the best of peoples for the people are as you bring them with chains on their necks till they pray, embrace Islam. You see that? Muslims are nothing but slave masters. Bringing people with chains around their necks. So who started the slavery, Abdul? You munafiq, you started it. And not only that, your prophet used to own and sell and trade slaves. If we go to Sahih Muslim, Sahih, Sahih, Sahih Muslim, hadith number 1602, 1602. Let me give you the link. For the people, please bookmark it, save it, do whatever you need to do. Help me to help you use these hadith. There came a slave and pledged allegiance to Allah's apostle. Allah is praying on him. On migration, he, the prophet, there's nothing called holy prophet. And we're going to show you that later. There's nothing called holy in Islam. Al-Muqaddas, right? So they are lying, right? They are lying in the English translation. Did not know that he was a slave. Then there came his master and demanded him back. Whereupon... Allah's Apostle, Allah praying on the Apostle said, Sell him to me. Uh-oh. Muhammad used to buy slaves. And you, you, Mr. Mimi Hijab, Mr. Mimi Hijab, you dare to talk about slavery? Colonizing? And he brought him for two black slaves. 
So Muhammad had two black slaves and he traded them and bought that slave for two another slaves. So you see, so he, the Prophet of Islam owned slaves, he sold slaves and he bought slaves. Boom! Slavery is on the forehead of your fake Prophet. Slam dunk. You filthy munafiq, ya hypocrite, mimi hijab. Again, spanked and served. You dare to talk about slavery? While well, your prophet owned slaves, he sold slaves, and he bought slaves? From another hadith, the prophet bought Safiya for seven slaves. So, Muhammad owns at least seven slaves, and he bought them. He traded them with one woman, right? This is from Sunan ibn Majah, volume 3, book 12, hadith number 2272. Let me give you this link too. Help me to help you. Copy it, bookmark it, do ever what you need to do. Right? Do you see it? And another hadith, it was narrated that Ibn Abbas said, Sa'ab bin Jatama said, the Prophet, Allah is praying on him, was asked about the polytheists who are attacked at night and their women and children are killed. He said they are from among them. So not only did Muhammad own, bought and sold slaves, he even killed women and children. And he said, kill them because they are from the pagans. Yes, exactly Shivali Armand. Islam is nothing but a mafia system. Right? Owning slaves, selling slaves, buying slaves, killing women and children. It's nothing but a cult, mafia cult, created by a kingpin like Muhammad. Muhammad is nothing but a kingpin. Let me give you this link too. This is from Sunan Nabi Majah, hadith number 2839. Sahih, sahih, sahih hadith. Muhammad ordering the killing of women and children and you Muslims dare to say without any shame without any honor or dignity Muhammad forbid killing the children and women Muhammad forbid killing of women and children you liars you deceivers you see guys use this hadith this is a very important hadith to put it in their faces and to spank them left and right when they say no 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 Islam does not teach to kill women and children you filthy liars you have no shame, you have no dignity. And taqiyah is running through your blood veins. And the proof is in front of you. Yeah, this is the best of mankind, Peter M. The killer Muhammad. Killer of women and children. And guys, to end it with a bang, to end today's teaching with a bang, I'm going to play a video that I created about Ahmadidat, the so-called Islamic Knight, the hero of his time. Let me play the video for you so you can enjoy yourselves to show you that even the old school heroes of Islam are nothing but liars and deceivers. I have read to you a verse from the Holy Quran. Abdul, there is no such thing called the Holy Quran. The Quran in Islam is unholy. Yes, you heard it correctly. The Quran in Arabic is called Al Quran Al Karim, the noble Quran. Let me pray for you a video from a Sunni Sheikh who will rebuke and destroy Ahmadidat when Ahmadidat said the Quran is holy. No, there is no such thing called Holy Prophet or Holy Quran. Let me play the video for you. No such thing as Holy Quran. You will not, Holy in Arabic means Muqaddas. Muqaddas. Have you ever came across an ayah in the book of Allah where Allah says al quran al muqaddas Ever came in a narration? No. And as mentioned before, there is no such thing as Holy Quran. We don't have anything in Islam called Holy Quran. In Christianity, you have Holy Father, Holy Son, Holy Ghost, Holy Bible. But in Islam, we don't have Holy Prophet, Holy Quran, and the Holy other things. 
Have you heard it? There is no such thing called Holy Quran. There is no such thing called Holy Prophet. So Mr. Ahmadidad, you're a liar and a deceiver. You're a liar and a deceiver. Be a verse from the Holy Quran. Be a verse from the Holy Quran. Be a verse from the Holy Quran. The Holy Prophet Muhammad. The Holy Prophet Muhammad. The Holy Prophet Muhammad. The enemies of Islam, they agree that this is the book that Muhammad left. Friends and foe alike, they say this is the book that Muhammad left. But they say that this is not Allah's kalam. This is Muhammad's cleverness. Very clever man. So we say, look, he was an ummi, an unlearned person. Is it true that Muhammad was an unlearned person? Let us investigate this lie. I'm going to show you that the Muslims, like this deceiver, this liar, Mr. Ahmadidad, they've lied to themselves, they have deceived themselves for the last 1400 years, and we're going to show you that Muhammad was not Ummi, he was not unlettered, as they say. We're going to show you that Muhammad could actually read and write very well. The Muslims have lied to us for the last 1400 years. Not did they only lie to us, but they have also lied to themselves. They have made themselves victims of this satanic cult called Islam. And today we're going to show you that. If we go to the story of Muhammad in the cave, inside the cave when a so-called creature called Jibreel, the angel Jibreel, we know it was a demon but Muslims claim that it was an angel. So Jibreel says to Muhammad, Iqra, read. And Muhammad says, Ma ana biqari, I cannot read. Then Jibreel starts to choke Muhammad and he says, read, Iqra. And then again Muhammad says, Ma ana biqari. And he repeat, uh, repeat this problem with him, choking him, over and over three times. And again, Muhammad says, I cannot read. So imagine if it was a donkey and Allah has the power, so called in Islam, he would have let the donkey read. I know, right? I mean, if Allah claims to be God, he should have let Muhammad read. So three times Muhammad says, I cannot read. So did Muhammad mean that he actually could not read, that he was illiterate? Or did he mean, I cannot read because there is no thing to read from. There is no paper to read from. And I can prove to you that Muhammad meant the last option. He could not read because there was simply nothing handed or given to him to read. Muhammad was not illiterate. And I'm going to prove that to you today. So if we go to chapter 7, I 1. 57 from Surah Al-A'raf chapter 7 ayah 157 it says Al-Rasula Al-Nabiya Al-Ummiya the unlettered illiterate prophet so if you read this you would think hey this means automatically Muhammad is illiterate he could not read and write but no illiterate in Arabic can have more than one meaning it can mean the following. Like I said, the word Ummi, singular, can have three meanings in Arabic. Someone who is illiterate, someone who is part of a nation, and someone who does not know the scripture of God or he did not receive the scripture of God basically spiritually dead person who does not know who God is he didn't receive anything from God and we are going to prove to you that illiterate in the Quran means someone like Muhammad who did not receive the scripture of God we Christians and Jews are called people of the book 
people of the scripture. Why? Because we received the scripture of God. This is why we are not spiritually illiterate, right? We are not umni. We are not ummiyun. We are not spiritually dead. We have the book of God, the Bible, right? We have the Torah, we have the Injil. So let me prove to you how the last option, option three, is the correct one in the Quran. Let us go to the Quran. Now in Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, ayah 78, it says the following. وَمِنْهُمْ أُمِّيُّونَ Unlettered ones. لَا يَعْلَمُونَ الْكِتَابَ لا يعلمون الكتابة أميون plural of أمي we are illiterates basically but not illiterate because we cannot read and write no because it says among them are unlettered ones who do not know the scripture except in wishful thinking but they are only assuming so here it says they have the scripture but they don't know what the scripture means they don't understand the scripture. This is why they are called unlettered ones. Right? They are spiritually dead. They have no clue. They do have the scripture in their hands, but they are only assuming. Right? Hence, ummiyun. Ummi. This is plural. Ummi is singular. Ummi. Right? So, Muhammad is spiritually dead because he did not have the book of God yet hence Umiya unlettered illiterate so he was spiritually dead this is why he was called the unlettered prophet right and now let us go to the hadith to prove to you that Muhammad could write and read very well let us go to Sahih al-Bukhari. So if we go to sunnah.com, in this hadith, Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 114, 114, we can read, Ibn Abbas said, when the ailment of the Prophet became worse, he said, Muhammad said, bring for me writing paper and I will write for you a statement which will you will not go astray. So Muhammad asked for paper, writing paper, to write something down. So as you see, Muhammad could write very well. He was not illiterate as the Muslims have claimed, actually illiterate. No, he could write and read Arabic very well. Did you see that? So Muslims, they will say, no, no, it doesn't mean that he could actually write. They will he asked for paper so that they will dictate what he says. No. No, no, no. He says, I will write for you. So Muslims, you cannot play this game. I will write for you a statement. He is the one who is going to write. So Muslims, we are immune for your lies. So as you see, people, so as you see, Muhammad was called Ummi, because he did not receive the scripture of God yet. And here it means that Muhammad could not read because there was nothing on paper for him presented to read from. So Muslims, stop lying, accept that Muhammad could write and read very well. He simply did not have the scripture yet from God to be called, like us, the Jews and the Christians, the people of the book. We are called people of the book because we did have the scripture of God Almighty, the Jews and the Christians. He was an ummi, an unlearned person. So no, Muhammad could write and read very well and we proved it for you so Mr. Ahmadidat you have been deceived 
and you continue using the deception after 35 years even after your death Muslims believe that Muhammad was illiterate he was not illiterate he could read and write very well as we proved it to you you know Muslims keep using these lies to deceive themselves but in 2019 we Christians can read and we can uncover the hidden secrets in the Islamic sources Muslims you have been deceived Ahmadidad is deceived and he deceived himself and his audience 35 years ago so let us continue guys I said you see this Ummi if he did this work he gives you 99 he said well you see Muhammad was a genius well he is talking about the so-called unlettered prophet that we exposed he's saying that Muhammad gave in the Quran 99 names you heard him right 99 names let me play it again I said you see this Ummi if he did this work he gives you 99 99 names of Allah well we challenged Muslims we have challenged Muslims to show us all the 99 names as Muhammad claimed that Allah has 99 names we have challenged Muslims to show us the 99 names inside the Quran until now they cannot show us the 99 names of Allah they are simply not in the Quran there are 26 names missing yes you heard it correctly 26 names of the so-called 99 names of Allah are missing in the Quran so Mr. Ahmadi that you have no clue what you are talking about we have challenged you Muslims show us the all 99 names of Allah in the Quran you cannot 26 are missing so Mr. Ahmadi that you are a clueless deceiver that's what you are I challenge him and I challenge oh it is that I challenge the biggest Shaykh now today in 2019 to show us all the 99 names inside the Quran if you can show us if you can show us that all the Christians will convert to Islam that's this challenge show us all the 99 names in the Quran if you can show us I will say the Shahada today what about that I will say the Shahada today so let me give you an example one of the 99 names that is not in the Quran one of the 99 names according to Muslims of Allah is Al-Rashid Al-Rashid which means the rightly guided Al-Rashid the rightly guided but it's not in the Quran it's not in the Quran unfortunately it's missing why it's missing Muslims claim this is his name Muslims claim this is his name which is false it's not in chapter 72 ayah 10 it says Rashada Rashada a right path Al-Rashid is not the same meaning as Rashada right a right path a right path according to Google translation it should have been Al-Rashid the rightly guided you see the difference between these two words Al-Rashid and Rashada so it's not there and there are many names of Allah missing in the Quran and there is a hadith by a Tirmidhi which is a weak hadith mentioning all the 99 names a weak hadith guys mentioning the 99 names which are not found in the Quran last time we checked Muslims always say to us we don't accept weak hadith right let me show you that it's a weak hadith and like I said 26 names are not in the Quran and we gave you the example of Al-Rashid 
but the Quran says Rashada. Let me go and show you the hadith. This is the hadith of Jamat Tirmidhi, hadith number 3507. 3507. It says Great Daiv, and here you can find all the 99 names of Allah. Al Rashid, the one that I described, right? The guide. This is even a false translation. But anyway, as you see, it says, indeed, Allah has 99 names, 100 less 1, right? So, this is a weak hadith. So, the 99 names of Allah is based on a weak hadith, the Aif hadith, right? So, this name is not in the Quran as we showed you. And there are many names like this that are not in the Quran. There are actually a lot of them not in the Quran. And we counted them, we came to 26. You see, here's a list. Al Nafi is not in the Quran. Al Mani is not in the Quran. And a lot of them, you see, it's not there, it's not there. So, Mr. Ahmed Idad, you are nothing but a liar and a deceiver. You are nothing but a liar and deceiver and you base your faith on a da'if hadith. Right? And as we showed you, Al-Rashid is not in the Quran. So Muslims, you have been deceived, you have been lied to. Like the likes of Ahmadi died the deceiver and the liar the funny thing is that it says you will enter paradise you read it whoever counts them shall enter paradise you will enter paradise if you count the 99 names but how are you going to count the 99 names if they are not in the quran and this is a wake hadith great life weak hadith so they are not in the Quran, the names, but if you count them, you'll enter paradise. The one who wrote this, the one who said that if you count the 99 names of the Quran was a complete certified donkey. How are you going to count the 99 names if they are not in the Quran? And this is a weak daif. Mr. Ahmadidat and the likes of Ahmadidat, you are nothing but certified donkeys. You are liars and deceivers and you have deceived an Islamic nation, a nation of illiteracy. They don't read, they don't understand that Islam is false and is based, as you see in front of you, based on lies and deception. How can you count the 99 names of Allah and you will enter Jannah? But you can't count them because they are not there. It's not in the Quran. They are not in the Quran, all of them. As we explained and show you and prove to you. So, Mr. Ahmadi Dad, you have been spanked. You have been exposed and you have been served. Let us continue, guys. Solomon chapter 5 verse 16 the word Muhammadim is Muhammad im im I am im im is a plural of respect no it's not plural of respect Mr. Abdul else we would have called Abraham im Moshe im that's not how we call them so get it out of your head that Muhammad is mentioned by name in the Torah and in the Injil. Because remember, the Quran in chapter 7, ayah 157, says you can find the unlettered prophet in the Torah and in the Injil. It's not in Song of Solomon 516. Song of Songs 516. Because it's not part of the Torah. It's not part of the Injil, Abdul, the first five books are called the Torah, 
that were written by Moses. But Song of Songs 5.16 is not in the Torah or in the Injil. So Mr. Abdul Ahmadidat, you have no clue what you're talking about. You have no clue about your Quran. You have no clue what this verse Song of Songs 5.16 means. It is between a husband and his wife. That's what the story is about. A wife is telling beautiful things about her husband. Abdul. He's altogether lovely. So the wife is describing her husband that he's altogether lovely. Why want you to force Muhammad inside the story of a man and his wife who are in love? You want to have them a threesome? God forbid. Mr. Ahmadidad, you're nothing but a liar and a deceiver. And you have no clue that your Quran is clearly saying that you can find the unlettered prophet who you claim that is Muhammad is in chapter 7, ayah 157. Let me show you. This is chapter 7, ayah 157. It says, read with me, those who follow the messenger, that Muslims claim is Muhammad, the unlettered prophet, whom they find written in what they have of the Torah and the gospel. Where? In the Torah and the gospel. Is Song of Songs 5.16 mentioned here? No. It is talking about the Torah and the gospel. So according to the Quran, if you want to find Muhammad, you should not go to this book of Song of Songs Chapter 5.16, no, you should go to the first five books of Moses, which is the Torah, or in the Gospel. So, Mr. Ahmadidat, you want to force the name Muhammad inside a book that is not mentioned by your Prophet. So, Muslims, if you truly want to find Muhammad, you only go to the Torah and the Gospel. So first, Mr. Ahmadida, learn your Quran, then try to force Muhammad inside another book, right? So guys, you, you, heard, you heard the video, right? Right? There's nothing called holy. There's nothing, <laughs> no such thing called holy. Video right? from a Sunni sheikh. The book of Allah where Allah says Al-Quran Al-Muqaddas. There is nothing called Quran Al-Muqaddas. Ever came in a narration? No. And as mentioned before, there is no such thing as Holy Quran. There is no such thing called Holy Quran. So whenever you find a Muslim guys who makes the claim that the Quran of Allah is holy, spank them and show him this video. There is no such thing called holy in the complete of Islam. The whole religion is not holy. So when the Quran is not holy, that means it's unholy, it's from Satan. Boom! On your foreheads. This is the nail on the coven of Muhammad. There is no holy Quran. There is no holy prophet. What are you left with then? You are only left with a satanic cult. A satanic religion because if the Quran is not holy that it then mean that it means it's from Satan thank you very much what did I, what did the Sheikh say you will not, holy in Arabic means muqaddas muqaddas have you ever came across an ayah in the book of Allah where Allah says al Quran al muqaddas ever came in a narration no and no. as mentioned before, there is no such thing as Holy Quran. There is no such thing as Holy Quran. We don't have anything in Islam called Holy Quran. In Christianity, you have Holy Father, Holy Son, Holy Ghost, Holy Bible. But in Islam, we don't have Holy Prophet, Holy Quran, and the Holy other things. Have you heard it? There is no such thing called Holy Quran. No holy Quran, no holy prophet. So that means the Quran is unholy, it's from Satan, and Muhammad is the unholy satanic prophet. I gave you the link to the video, uh, my friend.
to the one who was asking name in clear. That's the link of the video. So as you heard, the Sheikh never ever as a Muslim claim that the Quran is holy or call something called holy Quran. There's no such thing. It's the unholy Quran. It's the unholy prophet. Thank you very much. So why you Muslims write in your hadith the holy prophet? Because you Muslims have no shame. You have no dignity. You have to lie. You have to use taqiyya. Call your prophet holy. Call your Quran holy. Which is not. Al-Muqaddas, guys, Al-Muqaddas in Arabic means holy. The holy, right? Al-Muqaddas. Our holy Bible, our holy Bible in the Arabic is Al-Kitab, the book, Al-Kitab, Al-Muqaddas. That's the holy Bible in Arabic. That's how we Arabic speaking Christians call the Holy Bible. Al Kitab al Muqaddas. Bible means book, right, guys? So the Holy Book. Al Kitab al Muqaddas. The Holy Book. The Holy Bible. So when Muslims, guys, when Muslims say the Quran is holy or the Holy Quran or the Holy Prophet, they are copying the Jews and the Christians. And what did Muhammad say? Don't copy the Jews and the Christians. You are not allowed to copy the Jews and the Christians. Right? You are not allowed to copy the Jews and the Christians. So when Muslims copy us, right? They call the Quran holy. They call Muhammad the holy prophet. They are nothing but liars. They are nothing but munafiqun. They are nothing but hypocrites. And Muhammad forbid the Muslims to do that. So why do you call your Quran holy, you filthy liars? Why do you call, call your prophet holy? He is not holy and the Quran is unholy. So that means when something is unholy, it's from Satan. Thank you very much. <laughs> Lord have mercy. So guys, we showed you today, we showed you today that these liars, these deceivers are only using taqiyya, using deception to lie to you, to lie, to lie to their audience. Lies upon lies, taqiyya upon taqiyya, right? And this Abdul that you were listening to, he's, he dared to say that the fallen angels, the demons in the Holy Bible are jinns. And we spanked him. And we spanked Ali Dawa today. In this part 2 of this series. You filthy liars. You filthy deceivers. Mentioning slavery. While you started the slavery. You are the ones who were selling slaves. Your prophet used to sell and own slaves. Right? And we showed you that. Muhammad himself used to sell and buy slaves. Right? And he used to kill women and children. And you dare to say, no, no, Islam forbids the killing of women and children. Muhammad said, they are from among them. Kill them. Kill the pagan women and children. Right? And Muhammad even sold seven slaves to buy one woman called Sophia. You remember the name Sophia? He killed her husband. He killed her father. He killed her uncles and brothers. And on the same night, he raped her in his tent. He bought her from one of his Sahaba, right? He bought her from Dahya al-Kalbi. The same guy that Satan takes the shape of, right? Remember my video about Al-Abyad? Right? So Dahya al-Kalbi is the imaginary friend of Muhammad. Who is, who is no one else but Satan. Right? So, and we showed you today how easy it is to spank this liar, this Islamic hero of his lifetime. Back in those days, guys, the internet w did not exist yet. People did not know about Islam yet. So it was not really easy to do what he was doing. No one was silencing him. But later he got spanked and he challenged God 
And he said, if I'm lying, may Allah silence me. And then later, he was silenced. He was laying on his deathbed, completely mute. He could not say any word anymore. And we spanked him today in front of everybody to see. Lying about Islam. To fill his pockets with money. This guy was filthy and filthy and filthy rich. Like Zekar Naik. Right? And by these guys, we end today's teaching. Right? I hope you enjoy today's part two of this series. Exposing Muslim debaters, Muslim heroes. And we went to the Islamic sources, we went to the Bible, and we provided you the evidence that these people are nothing but liars and deceivers. And money in Islam is a huge business. So being an Imam, being a debater and knowing the debater is a huge business. It's all about the money and the fame, right? Guys, don't forget, help me to help you. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, click on the notification to receive notification and don't forget to smash that like button, destroy it like it's possessed by jinn. Do we have any Muslims? Let me open up my Skype guys. My Skype is open. Do we have any Ustaz? Do we have any Sheikh who has the courage and the knowledge? To refute me. I'm here. I'm live. Stop hiding Mr. Ustaz. Stop hiding Mr. Mimi Hijab. I knew, I knew that I had to teach you Arabic lessons today. Let me teach you also Hebrew. Elijah means God is with us. God is with us. Elijah means God is with us. You little he Hebrew Jewish boy. Yeah, look, you beautiful Curls, right? I love his hair, man. I mean, the guy who made this picture, man, he had really some amazing skills. <laughs> Elijah means God is with us. Yeah, 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 Muhammad Hijab, I agree. And the Muslim audience, clap, 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 clapping without any shame, without any honor, without any knowledge. Clapping. They had no clue what he was saying. Right? And they claimed victory. Yeah. Muhammad Hijab won the debate. Right? But we know that David would spank him left and right. Right? He spanked him left and right. Right? <laughs> and we showed you that when Muhammad Hijab, when the debate was over, he ran to Ghana, right? And immediately we started to make videos to spank him. Right? I made videos, Christian Prince made videos, David Wood made videos. And we showed you when he came back from Ghana, he said, no, no, I made a mistake. I meant to say Allah praises the Prophet. But Abdul, you are making it worse. Instead of fixing it, you are making it worse. Because if you are saying that Allah praises the Prophet, that means Allah is worshipping the Prophet. Why? Because all praise is only for Allah. Chapter 1. Ayah 2. So why are you saying without any shame, without any dignity, that Allah praises the Prophet? While all the praises should be only for Allah alone. But I know why you did that. Because your Prophet wanted to make himself equal with Allah. He took the name Muhammad. His real name was Qatham. It was not Muhammad. Because the name Muhammad is nothing but a divine title. It means the praised one. So this is why Muhammad Hijab said, no, no, it means Allah praised the Prophet. But your fake Prophet, he wanted to make himself equal with God. He took the divine title, the praised one, because he wanted to copy Jesus Christ, who is the anointed one, al Messiah, the Messiah, the anointed one. Right? So he simply, your fake prophet simply took a divine title because Muhammad is actually not a real name. It's a divine title. So instead of fixing it, he made it even more worse for himself. And this is when you are nothing but a Satan worshipper like this Mimi Hijab. 
Because when you try to fix things, you're going to bust yourself even more. You're going to spank yourself. And you're going to make our job as Christian apologists very easy. My job is really easy with these Muslims, man. Do we have any Imam? Do we have any Ustaz? Huh? Do we have any Ustaz from Indonesia who, ha who thinks that he has the courage and the knowledge to call me live, to defend his heroes in Islam? That we are spanking here left and right. Do we have any Ustaz? Today we have spanked Farid, this guy who made a six hour videos, six hour video about the apostate prophet, lying from the back of his teeth. We spanked him last time and we spanked him today too, in part two. Six hour video guys, talking nonsense. If you didn't watch part one, please go back, watch the first video and then come watch this one too, if you just joined in. Do we have any Muslim who has the courage or the knowledge to call us live? I'm live, guys. My Skype ID is the Arab Christian without separation. The Arab Christian. Where is the Ustaz when you need him? Mimi Hijab. Why are you not calling me live to defend yourself? Mr. Ali Dawa. Why are you not calling us live? He, guys, did you hear what uh, Ali Dawa was saying? We glorify Jesus more than you. We Muslims glorify Jesus. That's what he said on the video, right? <laughs> you Muslims glorify Jesus? That's new. Ali Arat, yeah, Ali Arat, not Ali Dawa, Ali Arat. He's a rat, lying, saying, we Muslims glorify Jesus more than you. <laughs> he was challenging, and then he was speaking for all the Muslims, right? He was speaking for all the Muslims. Lord of mercy, you Muslims glorify Jesus? And you are attacking us for worshipping Jesus? Glorification, Abdul, is tasbih. And tasbih is only for Allah. You filthy liar. You filthy Satan worshipper. So you are nothing but a mushrik. You are nothing but a pagan. Right? You heard him. He said, we Muslims glorify Jesus. <laughs> Not only that, you also glorify Muhammad and the proof is in front of you. Chapter 48, Ayah 9. You have to glorify who? The Prophet. And we showed you and taught you that according to Arabic grammar rules, not my rules, the Arabic grammar rules, if you go to school, to an Arabic madrasa, to an Arabic school, as a kid, they will teach you that the last mentioned person, in this case, the Rasul, the Prophet, the Messenger, everything that comes after, all the words are for the last person. So, since you have to assist Muhammad, you have to respect and honor Muhammad, and you have to also glorify Muhammad. So, Muslims, you dare to call us mushriki? You filthy hypocrites. Ya munafiq, Ali Dawa. And this is a command by Allah that you may believe in Allah and His Apostle and may aid Him in battle. Honor Him. Honor who? The Prophet. And you have to glorify Muhammad every morning and evening. Ya Mushrik ibn Mushrik. Ya Munafiq ibn Munafiq. Hypocrites and pagans. That's what you are, Muslims. I challenge you to refute me. Right here, right now. Elijah means God is with us. 
I really love this picture, guys. You need to tell me who made this. You are truly an artist, bro. Uh, Christian Dior, no. If, if someone can buy me a plane ticket, maybe I will. Someday. Someday. When I grow a big beard like Mimi Hijab. Right? When my beard is as long as the beard of Mimi Hijab, maybe someday I will go to the UK, to Londistan. Right? So my beard must grow at least six feet long. Then I will go there. And I hope a Muslim will pay for my ticket. Because it's not cheap. Right? We'll see what will happen in the, in the future. Right? Right? I don't know. But as you see guys, it's much better if you do it behind the computer. Because you can go to the sources to spank these liars. Right? To spank them. Because if you are there in speaker's corner, it's not easy to show anyone any source. So you can, you know, blah, 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 blah for hours in the cold, right? No, it's much easier to do it live. We are live, call us. I mean, you want to date me? This is why you want to see my face? Or you want to debate me? Of course, this is much better, Georgia. Of course. At least here we can talk. We are sitting warm, cozy. Right? And we have the screen to show. Maybe I'm lying, but the screen is my evidence. It's my proof. So, Muslims, because you know we are spanking your heroes, only excuses. Rob Christian, show your face. Christian Prince, show your face. Muslims, do you want to debate us or date us? What is it? Right? I'm not gay, Abdul. So if you want to debate me, I'm here, live. Where is your Imam? Where is your hero? Why is he not defending himself? Do you have any Abdul? There's a guy on uh, Facebook saying, you know, I will call you, I'll call you. Every time I put my live show, he puts a comment under, my, uh, under the Facebook, right? Under my Facebook. And I'm waiting. He's not calling. What's that, man? Talk is cheap in text. Rob Christian, show your face. I'm live and they don't dare to call me. Call me. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. Skype is open, my friend. Call me. Yeah, let him call me. Budi, Budi Dharma. Call me, Abdul. Call me. Defend your heroes. Defend Mimi Hijab. Defend Ali Dawa. Yalla, ya akhi. Call me. Defend your heroes. I mean, these are your heroes that we are spanking here today, left and right. By the way, guys, there's a... Atheist who calls himself Rob in speaker's corner. I'm not that guy. Muslims, Muslims, the more they watch my videos, they are confusing me with that atheist, that Satan follower. He's, you know, if you're an atheist, you're nothing but a Satan follower because you're rejecting the truth. You're rejecting Jesus Christ. I'm not that Rob. I'm a Rob Christian. I'm a Christian apologist. So don't confuse me with them, with that atheist guy right Andrew Martin we love you man don't worry but if you reject the truth you have to deal with it my friend it's you still have time we love you Andrew Martin we still love you but when you reject the truth what 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 are you then you when you reject the truth when you reject Jesus who claims to be the truth you are on the wrong side so deal with it you still have time, Andrew. We love you, my friend. Please accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. No one can save himself. We all need Jesus. And what did Jesus say? I am the truth. I am the way and life. He is the life bringer. 
If you want to live in eternal life with God, you want to be reunited with God, you need Jesus in your life, my friend. The legend, call me, Abdul, call me, call me. Abdul, call me. We are spanking your hero, Farid. We are spanking Ali Dawa, and we've showed everybody how easy it is to spank them. These are your speaker corner heroes, right? We spanked Mimi Hijab, right? Who went to Ghana to hide after that spanking that David Wood gave him. And when he came back, he said, Allah praises the Prophet. No, no, I didn't actually meant to say Allah praise for Muhammad. No, no, I meant to say Allah praises the Prophet. But Abdul, as we showed you, all praises are only for Allah, not for Muhammad. So fixing the problem made it even more worse for Mr. Mimi Hijab. Since we don't have any Muslim who dares to call me, I want to go to that part, guys, where Ali Dawa, let me scroll back, where Ali Dawa is saying, we Muslims glorify Jesus more than you. Exactly what verse, yeah? He went the truth for... Well, right. as you can see... And... Okay, all right. So what, what, what I want to do with this, uh, before I answer his question... Down to you, uh, for you cannot bear the... No gender. No, no. He's right. my equal. My, he's convinced or not convinced. He showed um, exactly what verse. Um, now, what I wanted to say is this, yeah. Okay. So that's Where did he say it, man? To force Muhammad into Injil. You're reading. Was Muhammad invisible? <laughs> that's the first. It is, it is false. No, I, I don't truth. One second. I went there. I don't have. Lie. Look, look. Okay, can you read your. your... Where did I'm he say it? About... Now, I want to ask a very simple question. Hold on. Hold on. I haven't finished. Let's go to that scripture. I haven't finished. What verse? I can't find it now. What verse is it? Yeah, I asked you for proof, so let's what, go what, to that. What, what, if I don't answer, you're going to to the root of the problem. I don't want to go to the Allah, branches. Allah, yeah? Allah, Muhammad, where he... Or praise his glory and gratitude belong Jesus to... Christ. Or praise his glory and gratitude belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, or praise his glory and gratitude belong to him and him alone. We worship him and no one other. Yeah? And um, now what I wanted to say is this, yeah? I'm going to answer his question. Where is his he? glory and gratitude. Yeah. Now he's saying all oh, praises is for Allah. That's your first question. What, what was that? Where did he say it, man? I really lost it. Was it here on this video? Am I playing the wrong video, maybe? Now, now, now. But you cannot bear them now. There's branches. I want to worship him and no one other. Yeah. No, it's the why? same video. Okay, go tell me why. Muslim, he said it on the same video, the same video man. I was playing it before. He's doing a jig at the okay, moment. can you read your, your, your... Why are you talking? You're a cameraman. You should read record. Your Listen to that. Read it from verse 7. Where, where, where's the evidence for that? Okay, Listen. Sorry, I've got full conviction. Don't worry. You just answer my question. But whether he here... Okay, one second. Am I talking to you, okay, I talking to you or her? I think it was here. Yeah? Now, I want to ask... you two women in Islam. Believe me, she's, a, she's, she's my equal. She's you, my equal. My, sir, sir, okay, sir, is she is she your equal? If you knew how we treat treat is women, is she your equal? Come on, then. don't don't treat her that way. If you know I how women are treated in Islam, can I finish? As you can see, they won't let me speak. Yeah, because no, when truth I'm is spoken, falsehood perishes. That's why she's screaming. <laughs> yeah. Now, if you knew how more women are treated in Islam. You would want to change your gender. No, 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 don't change your, don't change your topic. You would want to be a woman. Don't change, don't Trust change your topic. Because they're treated like queens. Don't change your topic. <laughs> you you treat women. What are they, you, you hear what he said? We treat women like uh, queens? Abdul, if you treated a woman like a queen, <laughs> I, I, I missed that part, guys. If he treats a woman like a queen, why would you need four women? How can you treat four women equally? You cannot and you will not. You can't treat a woman equally with four other women. That's not possible, Abdul. Everyone knows that. You don't have to be a genius to know that. And not only that, women are called cows. They are called khanazir, pigs. They are called fields to be, to be plowed. Al-Qurtubi even says, women are like cows to be ridden. So they are nothing but, you know, for boing boing. That's what women are in Islam. Where's the law for women, you filthy liar? You filthy deceiver? What law are you talking about, man? What respect for men do you have? And what about the Quran itself? If you as a male husband, if you fear that your wife 
will be disobedient, you are allowed to beat her. And there are no steps, guys. You know, the translation is false. The moment you fear disobedience from your wife, you're al already allowed to beat her. If you're just only fearing that she might be disobedient, immediately you can strike her. What You know, but in the translation, they make it sound like step one, step two, and then the last step is beating. No, 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 that's not what the Arabic says. You filthy liars, you filthy deceivers. What dribuhunna? Strike them, beat them. So what respect are you talking about, man? I really, where did he say that, man? That part where he's saying, we glorify Jesus more than you. Where was it? I really believe it was in this video. Yeah. I was playing it before, right guys? I'll give you the link guys. Maybe you can find it for me and we'll play it again, okay? This is the link of the video that I used. If you can find the part where he's saying um, we Muslims glorify Jesus more than you, then Help me to help you. I was playing it right before uh, in the beginning of uh, today's live show, but I can't, can't find the right spot. Anyway, do we have any Muslim? Legend, why are you such a scared Abdul? Coward. Where, I mean, if you are scared, call, tell your dad to call me. Or... Call your imam, say there's a Christian apologist who is spanking our heroes left and right. Please, imam, please, ustaz, call him live on Skype and end his career. Buddhi Dharma, call me. If you are truly a blessed Muslim, call me. That means you have all the knowledge if you say and claim that you are a blessed Muslim. That means you know everything about Islam. Call me and defend your Fake prophet, defend your heroes that we are spanking today. Elijah means God with us. <laughs> Lord of mercy. I mean, you know, they, when, when we end the live show, guys, Muslims will put hundreds and hundreds of comments under our videos in the comment section. You rob, you're a liar, and they put Bible verses in the comments. But the moment we are alive, they all become like little girls. Too ashamed to address their claims in the comments. I mean, talking in Texas cheap, Muslims. Everybody, even my cousin, who is 12 years old, can make claims. But be a man and call me. Well, my Skype is open. Call me, Abdul. Call me. Last time, guys, and I think the same guy called Christian Prince, that Zechariah guy, right? He called me and I hung up because, you know, these Abduls have no shame, have no dignity. Changing topic. Right? We are not going to feed the trolls. Right? He was a troll. He even called again. Yesterday I was watching the live stream of Christian Prince. He called uh, Christian Prince and he was trolling, right? Using uh, a girl's voice. Right? Yeah, my Armenian friend. Khiar, yeah, Khiar. He's a Khiar. Kosa. You know, you're a Kosa. You're not even worthy to call yourself a man. Because if you're truly men, if there are truly men in Islam, at least call us and refute us. I don't know Georgia Henderson. I have no clue. I don't know. I can't say anything about it. It must be, you know, there must be. Uh... Do you think they, uh, they will uh... or have the knowledge to call us? No. 348? So it's 348. Okay, let me try. 348. Someone is saying at 348.
Let's see. He shall glorify me. I dare you. I challenge you to bring me a single religion. Put Islam to a side that glorifies Jesus like we do. Did you catch it? <laughs> what did he say? Let me go back. Guys, listen, listen. What to this Ali Dawa nurse of Mimi Hijab? He's the nurse of Mimi Hijab. Listen, listen. I challenge you to bring me a single religion. Put Islam to a side that glorifies Jesus like we do. So he's speaking for all the Muslims. <laughs> Idiot. Potato. You just made a huge claim. You guys, you heard it. You heard him. He said, there's no one like us who glorify Jesus. That means you are committing shirk. You are a mushrik. Because glorifying is only for God. And not only that, you have also to glorify Muhammad. So thank you for showing us that you worship Jesus. And he's speaking for all the Muslims, right? Thank you for showing us that you are speaking for all the Muslims. You are worshipping Jesus. You are glorifying Jesus. You are glorifying Muhammad. How many gods are there in Islam, guys? Without any shame. And I, I'm, not, I'm not sure why the Christians are not addressing them. I mean, here's Hatun, and I'm not sure what the other brother is called. I mean, this is Speaker's Corner. Why are you not silencing the guy? If I was there and I, I heard what he was saying, I would have spanked him, man. I would have let these people here who are watching, spanking him and slapping him on his, on his neck. He's speaking for all the Abduls who are standing here. I mean, what, Abdul number one, Abdul number two, three, four, five. And these people only clap, clap. They don't even listen. If a Christian would have made such a claim about Muhammad, I would have rebuked him in front of everybody. Imagine if Hatun, this is Hatun by the way, our dear sister. If Hatun would have made a claim, and I quote, if she said, God forbid, but if she said, no one glorifies Muhammad like us Christians, everybody would have desubscribed from her DCCI YouTube channel. If I made that claim about Muhammad, I would have not have any subscriber left. But why are Muslims following this guy? This guy has more than 200k. 200k subscribers. What did he say? Look what he's saying. He said, and he shall glorify me. I dare you. I challenge you to what bring a challenge. a single religion. Put Islam to a side that glorifies Jesus like we do. Okay. <laughs> You see, he's speaking for all the Muslims, man. Why are the Muslims following this guy? That amazes me. I, I can't understand it, guys. I really can't understand why this guy has so many subscribers. Why? Why are you not desubscribing from him, Muslims? He's lying about Islam. He's doing bid'ah. He's doing taqiyya. Oh, man. You heard him. It's on tape. Lord of mercy. <laughs> Muslims glorify Jesus, Mr. Taqiyya boy. Mr. Nurse. Yeah, nurse. Mr. Nurse. Muslims glorify Jesus than the Christians? More than the Christians? Huh? Yeah, Mr. Nurse. Where are you? Where is Mimi Hijab? Where is Ali Da'wah nurse when you need them to defend their cause? Lying left and right. You see how huge business Islam is, guys, for these people? Lying from the back of their teeth. Blind followers, exactly Joe Bill. 200,000 200, subscribers. Man, if I would have made such a claim, I would have not have one subscriber left. All the Christians would have left if I made such a devastating claim. Mr. The Legend, I'm sure you're a subscriber of this Ali Dawa Abdul guy who just made a huge claim, claiming that all the Muslims glorify Jesus more than Christians. I'm good. Thank you, Anjana. God bless you. Yeah, and Jesus glorified the Father. Right? Exactly. So why are they not doing that? You don't sub subscribe? <laughs> you see guys? He, he, know, he know we busted Ali Dawa. 
So this is now he's saying, look at the excuse. I don't subscribe, Rob Christian. I just watch. So you only watch Ali Dawa's videos and you don't subscribe to him? Why are you even watching then, you hypocrite Abdul? Why are you watching videos of this hypocrite Munafiq? Saying that he, and he's speaking for all the Muslims, we, I quote, we Muslims glorify Jesus more than you Christians. End quote. Huh? Can, and, uh, you know, you know, the legend. So that's the only thing you, you, left, you left with, right? I have a girly voice. Well, this girly voice is spanking your Islamic heroes left and right. So it's good to have a girly voice, right? Uh, this girl here who is sitting by in his computer is spanking your Islamic heroes left and right. Do you have more mocking for me, my friend? Keep, keep them coming. Keep them coming. Right? <laughs> I really pity you, Muslims. Yeah, Buddhi Dharma, you are too smart for me, man. This is why you are too scared to call me. Right? Do we have any Ustaz who has no lines in him and dares to call me? Is there any Ustaz from Indonesia? Is there any Imam to defend his Islamic heroes? You see guys, you see how, what kind of level of intellect Muslims have who go on speaker's corner? They truly have no shame, they have no intellect. They have no knowledge, because if you would have any knowledge, you would have not made such a claim about all the Muslims. You know, maybe some people didn't see it. Let me play that part again. You know, maybe some Muslims just joined in. Look what he's saying. Yeah. Jesus said, and he shall glorify me. I dare you, I challenge you to bring me a single religion. Put Islam to a side that glorifies Jesus like we do. <laughs> You Muslims glorify Jesus like, like you do? <laughs> I, guys, I can't, I can't help myself. I can't stop watching this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's speaking for the Muslims. <laughs> you Muslims glorify Jesus, Mr. Ali Dawa. And you have 200k subscribers. These 200k subscribers, these 200,000 subscribers that are following you, who are subscribed to your YouTube channel, they are donkeys like you. They are donkeys like you and you are a certified donkey. You see, remember, you remember my debate with uh, Imam Ruhi guys? Did you remember my debate with Imam Ruhi? Did you remember my debate with him? No? I asked him about the hadith. I asked him about the hadith. When you raise your head before the Imam finished the prayers, Allah will turn your head into a donkey. This is why, guys, you have so many donkeys. So many certified donkeys here. And, you know, I'm from the Middle East. You should know that by now. This is why there are so many certified donkeys walking around in the Middle East. Because clearly, these Muslims, they are all raising their heads before the Imam finish the, the prayers. Donkey number one, donkey number two, donkey number three. They are listening and they are not rebuking him, man. I mean, if you didn't hear it, let me play it again. <laughs> Guys, I can't help myself, sorry. I have to do this again. He shall glorify me. I dare you, I challenge you to bring me a single religion. Put Islam to a side. That glorifies Jesus like we do. <laughs> you Muslims, he's speaking for the Muslims. You glorify Jesus. Nice shirk. Ali Dawa, nice shirk, my friend. And these donkeys here standing with you are donkeys like you. Yeah, debating, debating without a mic. That's not called debating, man. That's called being a keyboard terrorist, Mr. The Legend. Do you have only kids? My Skype is open, man. Man, where are the Imams and those stars when you need them? To defend these liars. Lying about Islam.
to fill their pockets. Filthy donkey. A certified donkey. Right? Let me look up that uh, video, guys. Just a second. Uh, let's see. My debate with Sheikh Rohi. Mm. I debated Sheikh Rohi a couple of times, actually. Most of my debates with him are not recorded. But I had two debates that I actually recorded on poll talk, right? Because like CP, I'm a very old school poll talk guy. And I used to debate with shiuch, with imams, with istads. Back then, they had actually had the courage. But the more we, got, we spanked them, the more they stopped coming to get spanked by us, right? So they stopped coming. Our sp Let's see if this is the... Okay, I think this is the debate. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Hi, I just had my score. You can see my uh, first debate between the rest of the videos. Okay, this, this is, is debate, our guys. second Watch. debate. And please watch and try not to laugh enjoy the debate you are a sunni sheikh from al azhar as you said earlier uh, we spoke uh, before uh, sheikh rohi welcome again i have a question about a specific hadith sahih al bukhari uh, hadith number 691 sahih al bukhari hadith number 691 let me copy what it says and post it in the room and let me read it for you, Sheikh Ruhi, okay? Look what your Prophet is saying. This is Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 691. The Prophet said, Isn't he who raises his head before the Imam, afraid that Allah might transform his head into that of a donkey, or figure his face into that of a donkey? So according to this hadith, this is Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih hadith, if you raise your head before the Imam finishes his prayer in the mosque, Allah will make your head look like that of a donkey. What do you think about this hadith? Your, uh, your mic, Sheikh Rohi. Let's see what he's going to say. I hope he's not going to use Google uh, this time. Or Prophet Google. Peace be upon him. Thank you, Rob. Uh, uh, this hadith... Uh Ass or donkey isn't intended uh, true, but uh, he referred to man will do this. Yes, I read the hadith. Yes, I know the hadith, but you don't uh, read what the ex yeah, uh, al -ulama, what they said about this hadith. The, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said that who pray before Imam he will uh, be an understand not to be a donkey in the Arab uh, culture the donkey refer to the man who don't understand not uh, the donkey he will uh, uh, become a donkey, a true, a true donkey. No, no. Donkey is uh, the man who don't understand. He is uh, the man, he is uh, lazy or one as uh, this. This is what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam uh, want to say to us in this hadith. Thank you, Mike is yours. Yeah, Sheikh Rohi, come on, man. You know I speak Arabic like you. Are you telling me uh, this This is not what uh, the hadith means, as it is right there? In the Arabic it says, rasahu ras himar. I mean, come on, this is a physical thing. 
it literally says in the Arabic, Allah will turn his head into a, a don donkey head. Come on, Sheikh Ruhi. Don't say you don't understand the hadith. I can read the Arabic too. And I understand the Arabic just like you. Yani, uh, why, why the, why the taqiyya, why the lies? Yeah, Sheikh Ruhi. Come on, man. Come on the mic again, Ruhi. Tell me. Doesn't the Arabic says, Anna yaj'alallahu ra'sahu ra's himar. Allah will turn his head, his face, into the face of a donkey. Please tell us, do you really in 2019, Ya Sheikh, Ya Fadilat Sheikh, our respectful Sheikh, do you really believe in this nonsense? Your mic, Sheikh Ruhi? Your mic? Yes, I said that to you, uh, this is not mean to turn into a real donkey. Uh, so read what the scholars said in this hadith. Don't uh, I said the hadith and don't uh, you do not understand the real mean, meaning of this hadith. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi not mean that the man in, uh, turn into a real donkey, but he uh, want to said that the man. He become understand that he not uh, uh, follow the Imam in the pray. This is what uh, he want to say. The mic is yours. Sheikh Rohi, please don't say you don't understand. Okay, bring me what the scholars say. I challenge you to bring me what your scholars say about this specific hadith that Allah will turn your face into a donkey face. If you raise your head before the Imam finishes his prayer. Show me what your scholars have to say about this. Please refute what I just said. That it's a physical thing. It will happen to you if you raise your hand. You'll be a donkey faced guy if you do that. Please show me what your scholars say. Your mic. I want to know and I want to learn from you. Ya Sheikh Ruhi. Ya Sheikh Al-Azhar. You're an Azhari Sheikh. Yeah, right? So please, I want to learn from you what your scholars say about it. Bring your proof that refutes me. Your mic. Okay, now I should the, the scholars what about me. He's going to use uh, Prophet Google peace be upon him. Okay, uh, Sheikh Rohi, you go ask Prophet Google, peace be upon him, and you bring me uh, proof uh, to refute what I said. I say, and I can read the Arabic too, and I also posted the English into, in the text in the chat room. It clearly says Allah will transform your head into a donkey's head. You bring me your proof, I'll give you enough time to bring me your proof. Go ask your friends. Ask other sheikhs, ask Prophet Google, peace be upon him. Maybe he will provide the answer. Sheikh Rohi said, I'll be bring proof in five minutes. Already.
They are nothing but liars and deceivers, like their imams, like their shiuch. We have been alive for so long, and no imam dares to call. Anyway, Christian Prince is live, guys. Go watch Christian Prince's live show. Thank you for watching. God bless you and your families. Lord willing, we will see each other again in another amazing live show. God bless you. God bless your families. Support us. Keep us in your prayers. Don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button. See you again very soon. Jesus is Lord and Islam is nothing but a man-made satanic cult created by Muhammad for his own sexual desires, killing of women and children, enslaving everybody who is against Islam. Jesus is Lord and every knee will bow and proclaim that he is Lord. Thank you for watching. And